Okay, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone all over the world. Thank you for joining us. This is the Global Watch International Call. And uh, today, this is uh, 6 a.m. Jerusalem time, um, early morning. But praise the Lord that here we are. And uh, we have the Isaiah 19 Highway Watch today. So uh, we welcome um, Global Catalytic Ministry, and then she will take it on from there. Bless you, and we thank you. May the Lord shine his face upon you and upon this watch today and open our hearts to how we need to pray for this Isaiah 19 Highway. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We praise the Lord and thank everyone. Um, Thank you so much, Margaret, and everyone who's on. We have a wonderful time um, that the Lord has in store for us tonight. We, in, to, in, in the morning, for those of you who are on the other, other side of the globe, we have a special guest today. Uh, her name is Belinda. <laughs> and Belinda is one of our prayer coordinators uh, for Global Catalytic Ministries. Um, and we pray for disciple making in the Muslim world. And Belinda is a local. She lives in Indonesia and she has a thriving prayer ministry um, that does a lot of work with other networks um, that not only uh, help to engage the locals, but also um, is raising up a generation to send out others um, from Southeast Asia into the Middle East to help prepare the Lord's bride for his coming. Uh, so she is going to share with us what God has revealed to her and her team and why uh, praying for in Indonesia and what God is doing there is strategic and very significant for what God is doing in building his highway along the Isaiah 19 uh, corridor, which um, many people are familiar with the story between um, Isaac and Ishmael and reconciliation of Isaiah 19. But there's also a very um, mysterious and powerful story about what God is doing in the nations and how what God is doing in the nations is very, very um, significant for ultimately bringing his, our Jewish brothers and sisters uh, to salvation. So without further ado, we just honor, we bless God. We bless every hearer um, and everyone who is seeing whatever our father is doing and saying um, in this hour. And we release Holy Spirit to presence with us and uh, to help us to glean uh, what he is saying right now um, through Belinda and what he's doing in Indonesia. Bless you, Belinda. Thank you, Shamara. <clears throat> uh, just want to start with the, with the worship song. Let's just take time and just Mm, come to worship the Lord before all the information that may be given, all the background, why Indonesia and things. Um, let's just uh, posture our heart to come before the Lord. Uh, here is in the morning and in the evening at your side. So let's just uh, worship the Lord together. Thank you. 
and revelation would you open up our heart would you open up our heart even today Lord this hour we just want to know your heart because we know the prophecy is an invitation for each one of our heart God thank you God would you open up our mind would you open up our heart and invite us to the bigger story that you have for the nation of indonesia and isaiah 19 lord thank you jesus we honor you and we welcome you holy spirit in jesus name we pray amen amen thank you everyone thank you uh, for the privilege that i can share with all of you for the nation of Indonesia so um, without taking long I just want to share screen um, uh, sorry okay everyone can see the screen okay thank you so um, here is what 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 the lord has been doing in indonesia and what is his calling that the lord is revealing to each one of 
us in Indonesia, especially the prayer room and then the church and the body of Christ in Indonesia. So it is something that the Lord really highlight in, in, in our heart. Um, and also, uh, I, I just want to start with this, like, um, the Lord, uh, one of the quote that I love, that I heard before, which is, uh, this, the prophecy is in, in, is an invitation. So I know that we are living in the nation, in one region of the nation, or in a particular nation, or even we have, if we are laboring in a certain nation, especially, uh, I'm talking about Indonesia, that known as the biggest Muslim population nation uh, in, uh, in the world. I know that it is not coincidence. And we, as an Indonesian, uh, knowing that the Lord really talking and speaking and even sending many people, we previously and until now we are become a, a mission field for many of the Western world and many of the nations. But we know that there is something that the Lord really wants to do. Why Indonesia, like um, all people from all over the nations coming to Indonesia and why Indonesia being known as the Muslim, uh, biggest Muslim populated nation um, in the world. I think there is something that the Lord really wanted to. That's why we are as an Indonesia, wherever we are, we kind of come together. We asking the Lord, we ask, especially for our my team personally, we come before the Lord and asking Lord, how Indonesia is significant in your sight? Why Indonesia is really important and why Indonesia become Indonesia? Like, what is your plan for Indonesia and what is your story? Uh, especially related with the end times especially related with the uh, biggest story that bigger story that the lord has in on isaiah 19 and and so on so as the lord uh, as we pray together the lord really uh, revealing one by one pieces by pieces for the body of christ in indonesia Mm, this is not something that we figure it out personally or me and our my team, but it is something that the Lord really spoken for the nations, the houses of prayer in this nation, the people, and then the church in an, in this nation. So, uh, I want to begin with the word of the Lord that are really highlighted for uh, Indonesia. So, um I will begin on Isaiah 24 and 42, which is, I believe that most of us are familiar with this verse. I know it's talking about the region of Jerusalem that centralized in Jerusalem and Israel, and also the east and west around, surround Jerusalem. But I, I also have faith that prophecy is an invitation. And the, the Bible is full of the prophecy that the Lord given. And the prophecy of the Lord sometimes is uh, going further than what we can think about. And, and if the word of the Lord on Isaiah 24 and 42, speaking about the ends of the earth and speaking about the nation in the west or in the east, in the coastland, I know it is not just the nation surrounding Jerusalem, but also we have faith in Indonesia at least. We have faith in the Southeast uh, Asia region at least, that this is also a prophecy for uh, our region. And on Isaiah 24, they say that um, in the first 14 and 16, uh, which is the context on Isaiah 24 is the devastation and turmoil that happened in Jerusalem, that centralized in Jerusalem. A lot of devastation, a lot of turmoil that happened in that nation until they cannot sing, even, even they cannot dance, even they cannot sing, even there is so much burden. And in the midst of that turmoil and, uh, and the, and the pressure that happened in the land of Jerusalem. Uh, there is a verse that Isaiah prophesied long time ago. And even 
maybe Isaiah not familiar with the cost line of the CR things or maybe he is familiar with it and even he didn't understand the songs that is being raised up but here in the midst of the devastation of Jerusalem there is a prophecy that's uh, spoken by Isaiah that say they raise their voice they shout for joy in the midst of a turmoil and devastation the cry they cry out from the west from the west concerning the majesty of the lord it's been talking about the people from the western of jerusalem and even further and and then and then uh, along along after that it says that therefore glorify the lord in the east in the east in the name of the lord the god of israel in the coastland of the sea in the east in the coastland of the sea from the ends of the earth so in the east in the coastland of the sea and the ends of the earth we hear a song glory to the righteous one and it is very significant for our region which is southeast asia and especially indonesia because we are in the coastland we are in the eastern part far east nation and then also we are in the ends of the earth so this verse is speaking clearly to us that it is an invitation to know that our part in the midst of jerusalem having devastation or turmoil um, isaiah calling for the nation in the far east the nation in the east to call to sing to glorify the name of the God of Israel from the ends of the earth we hear a song glory to the righteous one this is something that really spoken in our heart as Indonesian that the Lord invite our region to sing out to the Lord for his people and then and then also in Isaiah 42 it's also strengthening what happened in Isaiah 24 so in Isaiah 42 uh, it's this verse especially verse 10 to 11 comes after uh, the 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 Lord like Isaiah speaking about the messengers which is talking about Jesus and then the first nine it's talking about behold the old thing has passed the new thing has coming and which is talking the new covenant and we and which is through jesus christ and then the first 13 it's talking about uh it's talking about that the lord will come as a mighty man and he's coming with his seal and so on it is between the first coming and the second coming of jesus there is this verse that commanded it is not the first that suggestion but it is a first that said command sing to the lord a new song sing to the lord a new song sing his praise from the ends of the earth which is the end of the earth you who go down to the sea and all that is in it you islands you islands and if we know about southeast asia region we are consist of islands especially indonesia there are 18,000 islands in Indonesia so and those who live in them let the wilderness and its cities raise their voice which is which is wilderness also talking about the region of uh, Arabian Peninsula and and so on the settlement which Kedar inhabits let the inhabitants of Sela sing aloud I was uh, I I uh, a few months ago I was from I was coming back from Jordan and I know that Sela inhabitants of Sela it's talking about the region modern day Jordan which is especially in the Petra so let the inhabitants of Sela sing a lot let them shout for joy in from the tops of the mountains and it's so on in verse 12 you can read it again about coastland and about um, the inhabitants of the islands so i believe that it is not coincidence that it is like the progression from the islands from the ends of the earth to the arabian peninsula and then to the region of jordan to sing out to sing out and then the lord come out with his zeal for his people uh, so this is something that again highlighted in our heart that 
it is an invitation from the Lord for us as a region of Southeast Asia and also for Indonesia that we are we are uh, calling we are called to sing to the Lord we are called to lift up our voice for whatever the Lord wants to do in the end time and then after that I just want to zoom in into what is Indonesian look like and how it relate with this prophecy so maybe some of you coming to Indonesia and some of you never been in Indonesia or just now Indonesia as Bali because Bali is very famous to many nations but uh, we want to take a look and taste and uh, see how is Indonesian related with the Isaiah 19 region especially so Indonesia history is coming from a large kingdom it's not a nation previously but coming from a large kingdom especially two famous kingdom that are consist from a compilation from Southeast Asia region which is first of the kingdom which is come from the Buddhism kingdom known as the Vijaya kingdom and then the second one is Hinduism known as uh, Majapahit kingdom both of them are the largest kingdom in Indonesia despite uh, all the smallest kingdom uh, in the era of Indonesia before coming to into a nation but all of them are consist even the Buddhism uh, Buddhism kingdom are included Myanmar included uh, Cambodia is become part of Indonesian kingdom before which is the Buddhism but and the Hinduism is also consists like a region like Malaysia Singapore Brunei is also part of Indonesian biggest kingdom which is in Hinduism called Majapahit that united together under the kingdom of Buddhism and Hinduism so that's why you understand why even though Indonesia known as the Muslim biggest Muslim populated nation Indonesia is not real uh, the Muslim is in, in Indonesia is kind of different because the Muslim is Indonesia previously underlined by the Buddhism and Hinduism culture and not just that uh, the Muslim entering the nation in seven AD which is the Muslim that comes from Sufi which is the Persian world it's more mystical it's more like separate life and things it's more so we uh, if you come here you will know and you will understand that the Muslim here love to meditate love to have like sometimes uh, of doing magic and things like that through uh, it's coming from trading and and the Muslim coming from trading and it with three waves of Muslim coming which is the first one from Persian the second one comes from the Chinese which is uh, which is come from the trading also which is from the uh, uh, Chinese Muslim and then the third one coming from the Arab and then and then we also entering uh, the moment where colonialism happened we are uh, have become the colonialized by the Netherlands, the, the Portuguese, and even Japan. So the Christianity and Catholic entered this nation through colonialism. That's why it, it's no wonder if the Muslim comes through trading and especially later on we will read the history that the independent acknowledgement from Indonesia which has happened in 1945 but now uh, but the Portuguese tried to take over Indonesia again and then 1946 when the nations need to acknowledge Indonesia as uh, independent the first nation that acknowledge our independence is Egypt and Egypt acknowledged Indonesia independence so that the nations which is uh, after that followed by Syrian and Arab Saudi and Iraq and after they acknowledge the independent it makes Indonesia now Indonesia now will stand really strong in the side of the Middle East nation because they have been acknowledged our independent even uh, even the way we we need uh, we cannot stand with the Jerusalem we not we cannot stand with Israel because what happened and also why Indonesia the Muslim in Indonesia hate so much the Christian and 
and the people of uh, yeah Christian, especially because of what happened through colonialism. So you know the different right? The colonialism brought Christianity, but the acknowledgement of independence and the trading comes from the uh, Muslim background region. So it's making Indonesian right now, and. If you read the history, you will also understand that Aceh, which is the western part of Indonesia, the most western part of Indonesia, also have a good relationship with Ottoman Empire in the 16th and 18th century because of the spice trade. And Indonesia, I I went to Afdat before, which is in Israel, is the spice route that that. Um, that's showing the the route from spice and incense in the ancient world and Indonesia are acknowledged as one of the giver of incense and spice fender and and some of some of the people in Jerusalem believe that uh, one of the spices that are in the in the temple of the Lord is using something from Indonesia because it comes from the far east it's very very uh, precious if it's reaching out onto the land of Middle East because we need to go through the ships and all and the sea and things. So uh, even our, uh, even I just found out that we are a part of Indonesia, which is Medan in the western part of Indonesia under Aceh. It's also known as the sixth biggest incense uh, production in the ancient world, which is uh, they really acknowledge this region called Barus as the spice sender. Uh, so Arab Arab has a good relationship with this region. So um, in geographically, uh, we have like I said, eighteen thousand island, eighteen thousand plus plus islands which inhabit sixteen thousand, and also one thousand three hundred forty people group with 235 more to uh, as an unrich and 800 language with 300 bible uh, already already uh, translated so um, we know there is a diversity in this ethnicity and also in the, in terms of religion we have like six acknowledged religion which is christianity catholic hindu buddhism uh, muslim and also the the newest one is confucius so we have 87 percent of um, major muslim people but 70 uh, only 7.5 percent christianity who registered but you know that now in indonesia uh, there are lots of underground believers which is uh this last month uh i was told by my friend that it is like two million people already uh believe christ underground so yeah so this is indonesia if you want to see where indonesia is it is like between australia and the asian continent and we consist of island as you see like it's very consists of islands this is how we are very diverse and so in a diversity is very very key for indonesian because we are we are uh, consist from different ethnicity and religion it is very key especially if you being chinese and Christian like me in Indonesia, I will become a minority because uh, if you are familiar with genocide that happened in Indonesia 1998, a lot like a thousand of Chinese people being murdered in this land because of the hatred of the the land to to our Chinese people and Christian. So yeah, ethnicity and religion become a major issue in every election and every political happening and changing. Always these two are uh, the two key that is coming up and brought up uh, the division in this nation. We are the third biggest population in Asia and fourth in the world after uh, China, India and United States. And we have, sadly, in 
275 million souls population in Indonesia, 177 million is still unreached, living among the unreached people group. Uh, but the truth is, Indonesia is not, we don't have like a indigenous people, like the indigenous people also migrated somehow from this region, which is African, we call it from Homo sapiens, African people. The second one is Hapo groups, which is, uh, Hapo groups is, uh, it's, it's originally from Middle East around 30,000 years ago. Uh, and then also come from the Formosa Austronesia, which is the Mongol and especially the Taiwanese, like indigenous in Taiwanese. So we come from all of that region. An additional people group in Indonesia, we have Chinese and in Korean, Japan and all over uh, Western people. And after colonialism, we found out that there are Jewish people who live still underground because they don't want Indonesian people to recognize them as Jewish, uh, which is estimated around 20,000 descendants of Jews and still live in Indonesia, got married here, have a descendant here, though many are losing their his historical identity. And also, we have 14,000 refugees from the Middle East registered, most of them like from Afghanistan and Iran. And yeah, Afghanistan and Iran is the most, I think. So we come to the prophetic call of Indonesia. So, um, it is, it is something that the Tom has, which is the leader of Jerusalem House of Prayer for All Nations, make this like a map, which is the map is is dividing the nations in the world into the gate according to the gates according to the gates of the na uh, of Jerusalem Temple. So in it, Indonesia, it's very interesting because Indonesia are placed in the Golden Gate and some of it in the Bethany Gate, which is mostly in the Golden Gate. If we're familiar with the Golden Gate, uh, if we went to the Temple Mount and the Golden Gate in Jerusalem right now, we familiar with the gate that our Eastern Gate, which is called Golden Gate, Eastern Gate, that are closed and even though it's not in the original place, but it's closed and it's very strict guard. And be in front of the gate, you will see like the the mark, like the, the grave, the grave from the people, or the Muslim people, the grave for the Muslim people being placed uh, intentionally in front of the gate because they believe that if it's not kosher, the Jewish Messiah will not come and enter. So why it's significant? Because if we saw, if we uh, draw the line, we saw what happened in the in the um, Eastern Gate. You see how the devil really also doing something spiritually. That we know that the religion, the defilement of the religion and idolatry happened in this region. Indonesia is known as a Buddhism, Hinduism, and the biggest Muslim populated nation. And then across the Southeast Asia, there are Muslim, there are Buddhism, and then also Hinduism back to Jerusalem, even Muslim in the Middle East. So it's like the enemy don't want to make this, like the road of the Golden Gate holy. He wants to defile it. And that's why it is also very contrast with what happened in Isaiah 42 and 24. Lift up your head, uh, like lift up your songs, glory to the righteous one. But on the way we saw that the people worship other idols from Indonesia back to Jerusalem. It's like the def defilement that the enemy tried to do, which is, it's very, it must be very significant. Uh, 
And also Tom Hess has a prophecy for this nation, especially this region, Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore in 2018. He has a conference in Malaysia and he delivered this message. God says he is raising a highway. This is the highway of worship, highway of repentance, a highway where God will bring reconciliation to him and the nations that would respond to him. Here in Southeast Asia, Indonesia is the bearer because he saw like the the revolver gun, two revolver gun, one is Japan, Korea, and Chinese, and one is Indonesia, Malaysia, and Singapore. Here in Southeast Asia, Indonesia is the barrel, which is who hold all the, uh, the, the, the barrel that would need to be shot. And then the Singapore is the cock, Malaysia is the trigger. Malaysia is the catalyst of Asia. The Lord will put a trigger for from Malaysia and the glory of God is going to come over Malaysia as we know Malaysia now is very restricted and even to go to Israel is very difficult for Malaysian people Indonesia is still can deal with the passport from Indonesia but Malaysia if you have Malaysian passport it's very difficult the Prince of Peace is coming pray for the fullness of breakthrough to come into Malaysia and from Malaysia together with Indonesia which is the barrel and also Singapore bring in the fullness of revival the gospel back to the promised land he called this the Ismailite revival that would go through India Bangladesh and other nation back to promised land and also in 2012 Rick Riding from Sukkot Halel in Jerusalem had a vision that uh, revealed the new wave of mission. As he saw a huge army of intercessor, worshiper, and harvester coming from the Far East to help the houses of prayer, which is houses of prayer talking about lift up the voice, singing out, and praying to the glory to the righteous one connected with Isaiah 24 and 42 in the Middle East. First, I saw them as a horse running from Korea with torch and of revival fire. They were able to quickly mo mobilize in mission and were the first to arrive in the Middle East in the large number. This army brought such chains in the Middle East, especially from three nationality Koreans, Chinese, and Indonesia. So Korean like a horse, Chinese like a camel, and Indonesia like an elephant. And he saw camels, camels come from China, brought all the provision needed for the Middle East and house of prayer in the Middle East. They will move a little slower from the horse, but very persevere because they want the large quantity of living water. And then he saw elephants, elephants come from Indonesia. They move very slowly, more slowly, but when they move, they made a huge impact. They built bridge to the Middle East of locks representing the strength, the ropes representing flexibility. On their way, pick up workers from Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, and India. And these elephants were massive and began to step across the devil enemy stronghold across the Middle East. Their trunk like a chauffeur. When they would blow their sound, God's enemy will tremble. The elephants began to storm on the ground, cause the spiritual earthquake and opening up the hard ground across the Middle East. And and you can see all of it, like the spice and things in uh, Sukkot Halal website. This is the picture that their prophetic um, drawer, uh, like the prophetic people like drawing this picture about the camels, the elephants, and the, the horse. And because of this prophecy, we really believe that Indonesia playing a huge part, and especially because of the populated, Muslim populated nations, and being acknowledged first with Egypt. We know one of other people, Samuel Whitfield from IHOKC, when he was here, he is prophesying over Indonesia. Indonesia will be called less Hagar. Hagar who has Ismailite, like who helped Ismailite to fulfill his destiny as the one who got here. The one God's here. Ismail called, Ismail means God's here. So we have also known as the biggest Muslim populated nation. We have calling to help our brothers and sisters in the Middle East to come back to their destiny to call on one true God. So we know that 
Indonesia playing a huge part, not just to sending people, but especially sending the Muslim background believer to come back to the Middle East and help our brothers and sisters to acknowledge not just acknowledge God, but also to stand with the Israel. And also one of the missionary, uh, a lot of missionary coming to Indonesia, I know that this will push back a greater wave from Indonesia to the land of the Middle East and Israel. Without long, I just want to say what happened now in this hour with Indonesia. Indonesia now believe we have we have desire to send at least 30,000 sending from Indonesia, especially to Middle East. And many underground Muslim believers, as, as I told you, which is around 2 million and are increasing the discipleship making movement in the island and the underground, uh, underground people are increasing right now. The church is also in transition to acknowledge this and the calling of Indonesia of sending. Prayer and mission are coming together. And and if we talk about Indonesia as a sending nation, sadly there are two sending that happen. There are two sending that concise happen together, which is we call Indonesia as a sending. Yes, it's not just us, but the enemy also. Uh, one other day, a few days ago, I just met with the group of people. They call themselves as a Muslim missionary. And they are sent from Indonesia after they learn so much about Muslim from the Middle East and then go back and learn more in Aceh. And they ready to be sent out. And as I met with these people, they are waiting for their visa to Korea to make Korea become Muslim nation. So Indonesia is so important in terms of the zeal and in terms of what the Lord wants to do, but also the enemies know it. They are trying to send Muslim missionary, which is from the biggest Muslim populated nation from Indonesia, to make other nations as a Muslim. And also, what happened in this hour between Indonesia and Isaiah 19, this is how I want to close, which is with Middle East nations, the refugee here are fair, a lot. And the Muslim people here also learning uh, as I was in Jordan, I, I acknowledge that a lot of Muslim Indonesia learning not just the Muslim, the language, but also the military in the Middle East spread out all across the Middle East. Like all across the Middle East is all the region of Middle East we can found Indonesia learning. And also domestic workers, which is uh, the helper in the house. We are sending the workers from Indonesia, but we have faith. That one day we will, as a Moravian, we will send the domestic worker who fear God to the land of Middle East and who will turn the hearts of the families back to God. And the radical one who are coming, learning from the Middle East, they come back to Indonesia and a lot of terrorism happened because of it. And also sending start to happen right now to the Middle East. Both are the good one from the Lord and then the enemy. And then uh, if we know what is the relation of Indonesia and the Middle East right now, we know we will move the capital city into Borneo in a few years ahead. And the one who pay for investment of this new capital, which is it will be China and uh, United Arab Emirates. It's very interesting that Indonesia can bridge these two nations coming together to pay and invest for our new capital. And political position as non block for Indonesia, but we know, we believe that we can be a bridge for the nation. And with Israel, we don't have any, any acknowledged relationship, but we have quiet relationship in some of several sister cities in Indonesia. But the churches in Indonesia always go back and forth to this land. So, yeah, if we want to know about Indonesia, this is Indonesia. And we need to pray for Indonesia to know the one true God. As unreached people group, for the unreached people group to know God. Because if we talk about sending, we need the unreached people group from every tribe. 1,340 1, people groups should sing Maranatha to the Lord, should sing back to Jerusalem glory to the righteous one. The bride in this nation, 
discipleship will be the key that we need to pray for this nation. That sending happen from this nation as a mature bride. Church engage in this reality and also to fulfill her call. So it is it is something that we can pray for Indonesia. And I want to invite you to have some time to pray for Indonesia, maybe 10 minutes to pray for Indonesia. But I just want to start with a worship song that we need to come together. We need to, besides all the prayer points, I want to ask you to come to the Lord and ask Him what His desire for Indonesia actually more whatever the Lord desire for Indonesia and we can take some time to just pray and release our prayer for Indonesia if the Lord highlighted to you let's just take one minute to worship the Lord before we come into prayer together to pray would you release a prayer for Indonesia Jesus we just ask you Holy Spirit we just want to come in agreement with you come Lord Jesus come be a one true God over our nation. Let Indonesia sing glory to the righteous one. Let Indonesia honor the Lord. Southeast Asia honor the Lord. We know God that you have been preparing Indonesia and Southeast Asia for such a time as this, Lord. For such a time as this. Do whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit. We want to come in agreement with you. We want to come in agreement with you. We want to be in your story. We want to be in your story. 
do whatever you want to do, Holy Spirit. Do whatever you want to do in this nation. Do whatever you want to do, Lord, through our nation. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Anyone of you, just if you felt led to pray, just release your prayer. I would love, I would to, love pray. to pray from Australia, from Australia. We're, we're neighbors, neighbors. and, and I, just I just want to pray to you, Lord Jesus, that you, that have, you have a glorious plan for Indonesia. You have a glorious plan for your Isar 19 Highway nations. And I want to thank you for the blessing my Christian Indonesian brothers and sisters have been to me in the prayer tower with Tom Hess in Jerusalem and taught me so, so much of your heart for all these things. I bless them, Father. I bless those from the Bethany Gate and from the Lion Gate. And I just say thank you, Lord, in agreement with all my sister has shared. May your blessing come upon this precious nation of Indonesia, where there's an expectation of such a mighty outpouring of your Holy Spirit fire. The third Pentecost, Father God, we call forth your mighty reforming revival, Father. We call forth those ones who truly have had a revelation that you are the king and are seeking after your kingdom and to be filled with your righteousness and willing to go where you send them with the message of the king, with worshippers' hearts, with lives laid down in surrender to your lordship, Father. We thank Thank you for their courage and their boldness in the midst of such persecution. And we praise and thank you for your Isaiah 11 2, sevenfold spirit of God to fully be upon them in greater, greater measure that you would give them great discernment, that the spirit of the Lord would rest upon them, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge of and the fear of the Lord. Oh, Heavenly Father, according to Ephesians 1, 17, we thank you for such an outpouring of your spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of who you are and more and more divine encounters of, of Indonesians to awaken to the reality. You're not just a prophet in the Quran. You are the Messiah the son of the living God, and that your bridal remnant will arise in Indonesia and give glory to your name. The glory of the Lord Jesus Christ be revealed across all the Indonesian islands. As my sister has prayed, we agree. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Lord, I also thank you for my brothers and sisters in this nation that they are so... Um, willing to support Israel and yeah, the Middle East, God. I thank you uh, that they are preparing to be these elephants to carry all these uh, other soldiers and prayer warriors and uh, people who want to minister in Israel and the Jewish, um, amongst the Jewish people. I thank you that they are so willing to lay down their lives. And I ask you to hear their prayer. The stronghold of the Islam. And yeah, to, to reach the nations with the gospel and not this Islamic, um, problem, um, Islamic things, God. I thank you for Belinda and all the people who are praying day and night. We want to bless them and strengthen their knees and their hands and their voices, God. That, yeah, that they never get tired or, or um, discouraged, God. But uh, having their faces um, looking unto you uh, and running with you and after you. And we bless them. And that there's yeah, that many people run with them together, and that there's a huge army coming from 
Indonesia, God, who bless this nation. We thank you that you have made them and we thank you for their calling. And we ask you to protect it and uh, the enemy cannot come against it. That there is unity amongst our brothers and sisters and uh, this brotherly love that when brothers and sisters work together in unity, you have uh, commanded the blessing amongst them. God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Lord, and I ask for forgiveness um, for Europe and the European countries for this colonization to oppress them. And, um, and I, in order, or instead of oppressing and holding them back for their true identity, I want to speak out to release your people, let your people go. Let your people go to prepare the way, to prepare the way to the Golden Gate, as, as it is written in Psalm 24, open the gates for the King of Kings is coming. And that you are going to bless them, to release them, to get them into their true identity you have given them. And that you bless especially your children in this country to prosper, to strengthen them, to be to stand steadfast, to um, give them wisdom how to move on and to develop your kingdom in this land. And that a lot of people are not focusing on economy and um, wrong freedom, that they are longing for the true freedom, which is only in you. And I thank you, Lord, also for this obedience they are, they are that they are going to Israel, that they are going to bless this nation. Um, and I ask also to release all things which are necessary for it, um, that you provide everything needed and that people can, can go who you called to go and that there is a freedom and a open gates for them to bless Israel in Jesus' name. Amen. And as well, I ask for the Jewish people in the country that they that you are going to draw them into your identity, back into the identity you have given them, that they are not um, ignoring their identity because of oppression, but um, that they are recognizing the value and, the, and especially you as the source of life and that the calling you have given them to, to come back to the land, to establish your land, that they can take this um, on their own and um, that they are putting it into practice and come home. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I want to pray for the revival of the Ishmaelites, that they will know a one true God, that they will not go and mission work uh, from Muslims, Lord God, and try to be a missionary as a Muslim, but they will be a missionary for Christ, Father. Father, we pray that you will change them, Lord God, that they will have a revival, that they will be a, a, a fire over them, Lord God, that the love of God will burn in them, Father. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' name for this nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, and I ask you to uh, lift us higher, Father. Show us your perspective, Father, and and um, show us what you are doing, Father. It's much more higher, Father, than we can ask or think what you are doing and that you are using the enemy against the enemy, Father, to put the enemy in its place, Father. And you are, Father, we need that, Father. I ask you also especially for um, the region of Indonesia and the countries around, Father, that you give them their perspective because that's what they need to really see what you are doing and who you are above all the fight that's going on in their countries and that they really have a strategic a calling, Father. I ask you to lift them higher up, 
to see to sit with you father our father and to see your perspective and so, so that we can speak into it and understand it father i pray in jesus name amen we are on top of the hour anybody else would like to pray because it's uh... I don't want to pray, but I just <clears throat> want to thank Belinda um, for coming on and sharing such a rich time, um, you know, together and with the Lord. Um, and and I feel like really, Belinda, we didn't talk about this, but we'll probably have to do part two to kind of talk about um, really how Islam has taken its roots in Banda Aceh that Western gate and what God is doing to restore and cleanse that Western gate and to take it back, um, you know, and just how we can pray into that and to help fuel movement for Banda Aceh. Um, so I think that would be a really powerful and warring time, <laughs> you know, with the King of Kings. So thank you so much. Thank you, Margaret. Thank you very much. Thank you, Belinda. It was really an amazing um, uh, story that you gave us. It was very, very comprehensive and it was really a big eye opener to most of us. But I want to pray one last prayer. I want to pray for the bride in this nation. The discipleship will be very strong in this nation and people will be very open to it and that it will heart, the hearts will be broke open in the mighty name of Jesus, that then there will be a great, even greater sending nation. So Father, we want to bless Belinda, everybody uh, put their hands up and bless her, bless and bless Indonesia, Father. We thank you, Lord, for all that the station is sending, Father, in the midst of all the Muslims, our Lord, and everything else is going on. So Father, we bless Indonesia that this will be even mightier and a, a, a purer bride and as, as actually also an example for the West. So Father, we bless you in the mighty name of Jesus, Indonesia, and you bless Melinda. So everybody say, amen. Is there anything else you want to finish, uh, Belinda, something else you want to say before we close? We close. Uh, no, thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> yes, yes. So everybody say, Open up their mics and bless each other. Say goodbye. Thank you. 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 Thank you.